Welcome to the Beaverton's live coverage of the inauguration of President Donald oh, of President Donald Trump. Although the inauguration isn't until tomorrow, ceremonies have already begun, albeit on a rather somber note. Just a few moments ago, Mr. Trump and his new VP Mike Pence laid a wreath and observed a moment of silence at Arlington Cemetery. It was a poignant reminder to the new president of the sacrifices made by American soldiers, interrupted only by Trump's announcement of the opening of his new Trump brand cemetery and casino. Trump spoke to the assembled crowd, thanking the fallen soldiers and criticizing the failing Arlington management for not providing gold tombstones, jacuzzi caskets or a $4,000 a night mausoleum penthouse suite, all of which were available at the new Trump Eternal Resort. Trump hastened to add that his use of a presidential event to promote his business did not constitute a conflict of interest, since he'd only licensed his name to the cemetery's true owners, the Kremlin. Donald Trump's inauguration has had trouble attracting A-list performers, but in a surprising move, legendary rock star Bruce Springsteen has agreed to play the Make America Great Again concert, at which point he'll be released. Early this morning, Springsteen was kidnapped from his New Jersey home and transported to the venue's green room. Despite being badly beaten, he initially refused to play the show until Mike Pence presented him with the severed pinky finger of E Street bandmate Stevie Van Zandt. Now the president-elect and his supporters will be able to see the boss play classic hits from inside a steel cage dangling from the ceiling. Reached for comment, bandmate, wife and fellow captive Patty Scalfer stated, Bruce will cooperate, but because he hates Donald Trump so much, I can guarantee he will only play five encores instead of his usual 18. After a brutal 18-month campaign and a transition period marked by allegations of his connections to Russia, the only obstacle left in Donald Trump's path to the presidency is the 35-word-long presidential oath of office, a process which he has derailed by going off on a 23-minute tangent. The technically still president-elect's tangent, which began with, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully, and I really do mean faithfully, I'm quite a faithful person, people don't know this about me, but I truly am, has since gone on to include topics as diverse as ISIS, whatever happened to car phones, why he would never pay someone to pee on him, but if he did, he would love it and it wouldn't be weird, why math is for Jews, which of his sons he thinks probably screws chicks the best, whose fault the Titanic was, and how many is in a hundred? The answer to which he says is, who can say? In another break from tradition, Trump swearing in marks the first time that the presidential oath of office has been sworn on the June 1986 issue of Jugs magazine. While Donald Trump gives the first ever presidential inaugural address to include the use of the word cunt, a shocking development has taken place at the Lincoln Memorial. The statue of President Abraham Lincoln has come to life and begun to cry. Witnesses first saw a single tear run down the cheek of the 93-year-old monument. Then Lincoln began to violently shake before bolting upright, snapping his head towards the terrified tourists and demanding they explain to him what the fuck was going on. And the situation is not limited to Lincoln. Visitors to Mount Rushmore have reported hearing a soft moaning noise emanating from all four presidents. The Iwo Jima soldiers have finally let the flag fall to the ground, and across town here, the statue of Thomas Jefferson has reportedly sprung to life and is aggressively hitting on all the black women nearby. To be fair, that last one may not have anything to do with Trump. As Inauguration Day turns to Inauguration Dusk, Dozens of balls will be held across D.C. to celebrate the event. New Vice President Mike Pence is particularly excited about these, as this will be his first opportunity to chaperone at the federal level. To ensure the minimal amount of funny business, Pence has published a list of prohibited behaviors that all ball attendees must avoid, including spiking the punch bowl, boy-girl dancing, boy-boy dancing, and of course, being in possession of a vagina. Pence denied that he was using his new powers to police the bodies of grown men and women. However, he warned that anybody caught breaking these rules will be immediately placed in detention. Permanently. <laughs>